Hello everybody, welcome back. I've been in the hangar for the last week working on the airplane and I've just got a bunch of random footage in my, my camera and I've, now I've got to try to edit it down into a couple different episodes that make sense. So I think in this episode, we're pretty much just going to build the aft spar that runs through the fuselage on the Super Duty. One of the first things I'm going to work on on the fuselage is building this cabin frame, I guess we'll call it. We'll see what page we're on in the plans. And you can see in the construction manual, this is the page that corresponds to here. And the first couple steps are just kind of general information telling you which way the flanges point and where things overlap. So I've just put a check by those. And then we go through the building process. But the first thing I'm going to do is I have the parts, most of the parts laid out here. And one of the first things I can do is get this L stiffener angle riveted on the inside here. I've already done this side. Now let's get this one riveted. One of the things I really like about the Zenith kits is how they're always improving them. These stiffeners on my cruiser did not have any holes drilled in them and I had to drill them all. Now they come already pre-drilled. All right, so one of the first steps, it says Clico the bottom flange with number 20. And they're just talking about one of the black number 20 Clicos. But I was wondering, what is the bottom flange of what? Like, are they talking about this or this or what are they talking about? An easy way to figure it out is they're talking about the rear top channel. So if we go over to the plans and we look for rear top channel, there it is. That's number five. Number five is up here that's this piece, and they want you to uh, Clico the bottom flange. So obviously they're talking about this, so let's Clico those together. So as I was going to Clico this together, I noticed these holes are drilled for A4 rivets. And let's see these ones here. These ones are actually A5s. <laughs> so it looks like just these holes right here need to be opened up to to A5. And just another way we can verify that is by looking on the plans. You can see the bottom rivet line is supposed to be A5 rivets. Now since I just drilled out these holes, they do need to bird. On the outside here, I just used this tool, but this doesn't work on the inside because you might notice this flange is bent inwards like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my file down the inside of it like that and just scrape off or sand off those burrs. <laughs> Unfortunately, I already did prime the inside of this, but what I'll do is I'll just deburr the inside of those holes and then just shoot another coat of primer over the holes because when I do this, it'll probably scratch the primer. Well, I'm actually kind of surprised that barely even scratched the primer. I'm not sure if you can tell from here. This primer is actually pretty tough once it, once it dries, but I will just shoot, I'll go ahead and shoot just another thin coat of, of primer on that flange. a check mark next to the first step since it's done and check out this pen i got it from arrow led i'm not sure if they sell them but i think i got it at an air show in one of their booths it's got a light on the end of it how cool is that all right the next step in the manual is to clico this piece on here you don't notice i have just a, a thin coat of primer on the inside just because it is a mating surface so we'll put that on there like that 
we'll just put a few Clecos in it here and there. And I think actually the next step in the manual is actually to rivet this. And riveting is always the fun part. Well, here is our completed, basically aft spar. It's amazing how beefy this is. Uh, it, I mean, it's pretty thick aluminum, but once you get everything riveted together, it's just really neat to see and feel it. You know, of course, our goal here is to build an airplane, but don't forget to celebrate little victories like this along the way. There's a lot of satisfaction in just completing a small part like this. And every part that you complete is one more part of the big picture. So I always take a minute just to enjoy the little, the little sub assemblies that I, I build. I always seem to make such a mess of my work area when I'm building. So now that this is completed, let's get this mess cleaned up and we'll move on. Well, I now have a nice clean work area again. The next thing I want to do is install these to the top aft spar. And you'll notice that one's primed and this one's not. And the reason why is because it may not show up on here, but on the edges here is a machined edge. And I spent a lot of time on this one, sanding and filing this down to make it nice and smooth. If you have a scotch bright wheel like this it really helps a lot but i actually can't use this one on mine because of all these little grooves in here basically what it does is it just kind of sands grooves in the edge so i do this all with a file and sandpaper and of course that big wheel won't get into here and the big wheel is too big for this radius here um, i actually have a smaller one i just thought of now i wonder if this one, see that has a bunch of grooves in it too. Uh, I don't have any more, although I think I have some in here. Oh, here's a new one. Maybe I'll put this one on a die grinder and use this. This might work nice. I'm gonna bolt this wing attach bracket onto the top spar. And you'll notice there's two different bolt sizes they're calling for, a 5A and a 6A. The two on the top here are the longer ones. And they are longer because you can see the holes in the top are going through twice the material as the holes going through here. So here's two uh, fives and then this is a six. And I also have three washers and three nuts for this. All right, I have all six of the bolts in here. When you do this, make sure all your bolt heads are facing the same way. Your airplane won't fly right if you don't. To get to these three, they're kind of tough to do. You know, to put the washer on the nut and get the nut on the bolt, you kind of have to use a pair of pliers going in there. And a tip that I have for you I remembered this on my cruiser. I actually forgot on here, but I, I rem after I did this, I remembered on my cruiser. Do these three bolts first before you put these in, because as you are trying to get your wrench and stuff like that back in there on those nuts, these three here just kind of get in the way a little bit. So put these three in, and then you can put these three in. Here's another thing I wanted to show you. These holes get filled with these big A6 rivets. And you'll notice a lot of times you can't push them in the hole. And the reason why is just the way these rivets are manufactured, there's always a little, a little burr on there. And what I do is I take one of these little files and I just kind of file off that little bit of a burr 
There's four of them because these rivets, you can tell are pressed in kind of like you do your flight control cables. If you know what I'm talking about um, with the swage fitting. So I file that off and then you can put them in the hole. Well, that was a lot of work, but guess what? We are done with this page of the plans. We can move on to the next page. All right, guys, this was a little bit of a shorter episode. The next footage that I have, I kind of want to separate from this. So thanks for watching. Please hit the thumbs up button if you haven't done that yet. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed yet. And I guess we'll see you on the next episode. Yeah.